Beloved, Christ is in our midst. Today, among the saints we remember is the Holy Prince Alexander Nevsky, specifically the transfer of his relics from Vladimir to St. Petersburg, a 500-mile journey using 18th century transportation. St. Alexander was a, pre, was a prince of medieval Rus in one of the most trying times in its history, at the time of the Mongol Empire, called the Golden Horde because of the gold color of their tents, who sacked Rus from the east and the Teutonic Knights who invaded from the west. The film Alexander Nevsky by Eisenstein with musical score by Prokofiev shows the prince's victory over the knights with much drama in the action and the music alike. Saint Alexander, however, is a saint not because of his, of his victories in battle, but more because in humility, he knew when not to lift up the sword when to spare lives. Saint Alexander's father, Yaroslav, made a treaty with the Mongols to turn them from enemies and plunderers into honorable allies. And Saint Alexander continued with this work of peacemaking, showing by his deeds Messiah Jesus' words to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. This was not popular with all the other princes of Rus, who organized uprisings against the Mongol Empire, despite Saint Alexander's policy of peace. It was Saint Alexander who journeyed four times to the Mongol capital, 800 miles one way, and this in the 13th century, in the 1200s, no airplanes, cars, or highways, going with his head bowed to plead for the people that the Mongols not seek revenge. That's 1,600 miles round trip with meager conveyances, a horse on foot, some fundamental carriage. And he did this four times for the sake of the people. This more than any physical battles won enshrines him in one's heart. By humility, Saint Alexander showed forth Christ Jesus in him. For the Lord, humility itself, spoke no word in his defense before the Sanhedrin and Pontius Pilate. Messiah Jesus not only did not condemn those who wounded him and put him to death, but even pleaded before the Father that they be forgiven this sin. It was on St. Alexander's return trip from his fourth and final journey to the Mongol capital that he took ill before he could reach Vladimir. And so he renounced his princely title and became a monk, tonsured with the new name, Alexis, and he fell asleep in the Lord on 12 November, 1263. And on 30 August, 1724, his relics were transferred from Vladimir to St. Petersburg, where they rest to this day. In observing this feast, we also observe the names day of our Archbishop Alexander. And from my own days in seminary, St. Alexander Nevsky has been a saint in my memory. After seminary, I visited the cathedral that bears his name in Howell, New Jersey. And the church where Matushka Lisa and I were married is the St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral in Pittsburgh. And one of the striking features of that church is that the icon of St. Alexander on the iconostasis and on the tetrapod shows him dressed not in royal purple, or princely robes, or an ermine, and all the rest, with a sword in his hand, but wearing the dark robes of a monk, with the monk's cowl on top of his head, showing his humility. He served Messiah Jesus as prince, yes, 
but he gave up this honor that is of this world, renouncing any splendor such as it was in the 1200s. And remember the psalm we sing, put not your trust in princes, in sons of men in whom there is no salvation. For when his breath departs, he returns to his earth, and on that very day, his plans perish. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Let us remember then on this day, the prince turned monk, Alexander, Alexis of the Neva, who imaged forth Christ and ask this blessed one of God to intercede for us, that we be wise as serpents and gentle as doves in humility, so that Christ too may shine forth in us.